Recently while watching the airing anime of Spring 2018, I had a peculiar thought with one show in particular, Wotakoi, or Love is Hard for Otaku. An anime not just about romance or being a part of nerd culture, but working in an office. Despite being abundantly knowledgeable on how such careers can be soul-crushing, I still have a yearning for such. Waking up at a set hour, Monday through Friday, putting on nice clothes, working in a field where I wouldn't feel like others looked down on me, maybe going out for drinks afterwards with friends from the office. We all desire to belong to an acceptable norm. But a happy norm, in truth, is rather unachievable. The reality of chasing such is often ugly, and so we seek out releases, much like Retsuka. From the outset, Agretzko is very unanime as we usually see the medium. Not because the cast is anamorphic animals, but because it is visually so unlike much of his contemporaries. Simplistic designs with limited but tight and consistent animation feels far more western or children's show in nature. The rest of the Sanrio cast tends to not be quite as real as Retsuko. Rather, icons of escapism or something simply cute. Hello Kitty or My Melody are fitting examples. Retsuko, meanwhile, is youthful optimism crushed under the weight of the adult world. Agretzko begins with the titular Retsuko walking to work in a picturesque scene of cherry blossoms, passing co-workers to befriend at her new career where nothing can stop her from succeeding in society. While giving an internal monologue, this all comes crashing down, a simple but impactful metaphor as the opening credits quickly proceed and a splash screen of five years later pops. Retsuko is defeated, youthful optimism is no more, and has been replaced by disdain for the everyday. A lack of willingness to get up, making deals with her alarm clock, promising she'll rouse from her slumber, but she just needs a few more minutes. Her room is littered with not just overturned trash, but a cheap convenience store dinner and empty beer cans. Terms like model citizen being thrown around are important. Agretzko isn't just about youth feeling underachieved but the pressure to be a functioning cog in society. It's at this moment I can break out my fancy unfinished college education to explain individualist versus collectivist cultures. Many cultures exist in some sort of amalgamation, but such terminology can be valuable. For example, the US would generally be considered individualist, given the Bill of Rights, which focuses heavily on individual rights, or a fetishism of the self-made, such as Elon Musk. The whole pull yourself up by the bootstraps narrative. How many who voted for Donald Trump cited his take no shit from anyone attitude as a major draw. Where in Japan, there is a focus on how you can help the group succeed, to never be bigger than the whole. That old stereotype of Japanese parents pressuring their children to follow in their footsteps and not be a shameful burden comes from such. Or why it's not terribly uncommon for CEOs of Japanese companies to take pay cuts rather than enact widespread layoffs, such as the former and tragically late Nintendo president Satoru Iwata did in 2011. We see this in Agretzko via devotion to the company. The supporting cast and Retsuko herself are all trying to find a way to meld into the workplace, despite it being incredibly toxic. And so Retsuko finally prepares herself for work, all the while the metal soundtrack building and coming to a head as she stumbles through her morning routine, scarfing down toast with dejected bags under her eyes, going through her makeup routine, then amusingly checking herself for daily essentials. Wallet, phone, keys, wallet, phone, keys, wallet, phone, keys. Day in and day out, I mutter those words to myself before leaving for work, as does Retsuko. So she stumbles onto the packed B.O. infested train, doing her best to persevere, looking to assign advertising new work, as if she'd ever actually leave her job, only to arrive and realize in her daily haze she's got the wrong shoes on. What follows is a humorous little scene of Retsuko trying to hide her embarrassment and meeting the first shitty co-worker, Tsunoda. She's that person who not only sucks up to the boss, but knows she's a cute girl, cranks it up to a hundred, and manipulates everyone she can. The social media obsessed, baby boomer idea of a millennial who is just the tip of shit mountain of contractually obligated social interactions for Retsuko. Besides two close friends and two older women in other departments, Retsuko cannot stand those she shares the office with. 
Brown nosers, nosy rumor mongers, people shoving their personal lives into her face as if Retsuko gives a damn. Even those Retsuko befriends are flawed. Within seconds of Fenico being introduced, she goes from Sunoda, I hate that girl, to admitting she follows her online, breaking down a thorough analysis of Sunoda's online activity. Fenico is obsessed. What we have here is an actual, thoughtful criticism of social media. How it makes us into our own paparazzi and people will eat up every detail even though doing so brings no happiness to their lives. They just want to hate something. In the past couple years, I've done my best to change the way I engage with social media. Not posting as much personal information, unfollowing anyone who doesn't bring positivity to my feeds, cynicism is only so funny, tweeting strictly politics, well, given how apathetic I've come to be about government and the discourse around such, I just can't be bothered to listen to most. Plus, you kind of come off as one-dimensional as many folks who strictly talk politics, games, or whatever sole subject they define themselves by do. There's importance in both curation and learning to limit engagement. I was genuinely annoyed the other day when someone screenshotted a certain well-known pseudo-intellectual in the games industry whose hot takes about violence and gaming are, well, fucking lame. I muted the person in question years ago for good reason. It used to be that even though I didn't follow such a person, I would occasionally check in on their profile to see what laughable garbage they've been spewing. No more. Being a Fenico isn't healthy. Before she even sits at her desk, Retsuko is exhausted, all without running into her chauvinistic pig of a boss, Director Tan. A man who worked his way up the corporate ladder, being treated like garbage, only to do the same to those under him. It's this need to have those who come after earn it. As if the fact that they might not have to deal with the same bullshit you had to makes them undeserving. And so Director Tan belittles Retsuko, putting the cherry on top of mountain sexism when explaining to his sniveling underling that it's cute when a woman is incompetent. Even if it can get annoying when they're supposed to be serving you, it's better than them being competent. And so Retsuko explodes. Count to 10 and Retsuko will return to being a mild-mannered employee. She sections herself off, hiding her outlet from the rest of the world because she's embarrassed of her true feelings, of a defining aspect of herself that could cause problems for the workplace. There's that collectivism again. I particularly like this next bit where Gori and Washimi are two women who walk with perfection. These powerful women are putting up an act in a workplace that is so male-dominated. It just goes to show how they have to work extra hard to be taken seriously. It also speaks to how women are often valued for their looks. It's a quick, cute little joke that foreshadows some of the themes in the later episodes before shoving us right back into the misery of Retsuko's work life. This time, not just at the hands of director Tan, but Tsunoda, who pawns her work off on Retsuko. There's something to be said for the smooth, wiggly animation of Tsunoda that just so perfectly captures her faux idol personality that she employs. The episode comes to a close as Retsuko wanders the neon-lit city, turning down a dark alley as she explains her most personal secret, entering a karaoke bar and screaming death metal to release the rage she builds up at her shitty job. Despite this, Agretsuko isn't about Retsuko hiding her secret. It's about how she learns to stop caring what is outside of her control, about melding the person she suppresses with her outward personality to do this in service of not the collective, but the individual. Many of us, if not most of us, are unsatisfied with our jobs. Agretzko's themes of disliking your work isn't new. Across all forms of media, you can find dozens of examples in a matter of minutes. The Office, particularly the early seasons, Office Space, and Waiting. When Eric works at Fat Burger in that 70s show, or how his father Red, your typical hardworking American, is constantly shafted by the richer man. All those moments in Breaking Bad where Walt is teaching ungrateful high schoolers well beneath his superb knowledge of chemistry. Workaholics and characters such as April from Parks and Rec. Kondo from After the Ring. I am a hero's early chapters. That Superstore show my friend watches and I managed to get through a whole episode without even a single <laughs> Solanine and Paprika. There, 12 examples I came up with in a matter of like 7 minutes. But there's something special about Agretzko that just makes it feel a bit unique. Our work is often a compromise between happiness and financial security. And it often defines us. 
What do you do for a living? It's a question that rings all too resonant. The answer shouldn't be considered entirely telling of one's worth. There is so much more to an individual than what they do to pay the bills, but yet so many value it highly. High school reunions, dating, or average conversations can all lead to such a question. Retsuko isn't just an accountant, she's someone who has a passion for music, spending time with those she holds dear, making connections with people she might not have if not for her shitty job. And me, I'm more than my normal person job I barely tolerate. I'm my writer, video editor, photographer, passionate consumer of all forms of media, former surfer and skimboarder, someone who until high school played baseball three seasons of the year, not completely terrible cook, fan of the Philadelphia Flyers and Seattle Mariners, someone fascinated by culture, history, and geography. There is so much to us all, and while I've brazenly spoken about my hopes for this YouTube channel being my primary means of income, and I beat myself up every day that isn't the case, the truth of it is that even if I do become a full-time YouTuber, I won't let it define me, just as Retsuko doesn't let her job define her. Patreon! I have one of those. Support it if you'd like to see these videos keep on coming. Otherwise, be sure to like, subscribe, all that nonsense. It is greatly appreciated as well.